Hi everyone, good evening. Welcome to the Dan Cloud Garage. In this session, I am going to talk about VMware NSXT Data Center 3.2 overview. So session one, before we deep dive into the NSXT data center concepts, we have to learn the basics of STDC. It, the STDC means software defined data center and network virtualization. Once we are familiar with the basic concepts, it's easy to understand the NSXT deep dive concepts. OK, here is the agenda. What are the NSXT available versions and what are the prerequisites to learn NSXT and what is a software defined networking in short form STN and what is a software defined data center that is STDC and before we understand the STDC architecture, we need how to learn the actual operation model difference between server and network virtualization and benefits of network virtualization. Once we are familiar with these two concepts, it's easy to understand STDC architecture. And then STDC architecture overview and benefits and what is VMware NSX and what is VMware NSX portfolio and why do we use VMware NSX and what is the VMware multi cluster and multi cloud strategy. Just a second. OK, now let's move on to the next slide. The first point is what are the NSXT available versions? At present, we have NSXT multiple versions. It started from NSXT data center 1.0 and 1.1 to 2 series. Also, we have multiple versions like 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4 and 2.5. And from uh, since 2020 onwards, uh, VMware has updated the 2 series version to 3.0. And after 3.0, we have 3.1, 3.2 and the very latest NSXT data center version is 3.2.1. And dot one means it comes with the latest patch and which was released on this year. Uh, May 17th, it's actual release date, and this is the build number 19801959. And uh, why we are uh, talking about NSXT versions is suppose our existing customers, if anyone is using NSX 3.0 or NSX 2 series versions, we should recommend the customer to upgrade it to the latest version because the latest versions have all the uh, new features and as well as the all the bugs will be fixed. Whatever the version we have the previous version those version bugs will be resolved in the latest version nsxt data center 3.2.1 now let's talk about what is the prerequisites to learn nsxt so nsxt prerequisites are these are all the main prerequisites that means uh, if, uh, we we have an idea on all these basic concepts to understand nsxt deep dive concepts. Let's say the first point is fundamentals of data center. So data center, we have to know what is the equipments are available in data center. Data center, we can also call it as HDDC, hardware defined data center. And we should also familiar with STDC terminology. STDC means software defined data center. And IP addressing concepts also we have to learn. And IP addressing, I, I was already covered in the previous sessions uh, in my YouTube channel. You get, this is the link, and it's exactly the seventh session, VSPS 7, ESXA networking and IP addressing home lab. Uh, if you have anyone interested to learn IP addressing concept, go to this link, okay? And now other concepts is basics of networking device switch router firewall and load balancer suppose if you are from networking background you are already familiar with all these concepts who are not familiar with the networking concepts, at least we should have basic idea on what is switch router firewall and load balancer and also good understanding of tcp ip services and network security and working experience with enterprise switching routing firewalls will be an added advantage and uh, most of the time, some of the my friends used to ask, is NSXT before we start learning NSXT, is it required to learn NSXV? 
uh, generally NSX V experience is not required. NSX is completely a new course. If you have this basic concepts knowledge, it's easy to understand the NSX T concepts. Okay, and the uh, only difference is NSX V means it's a NSX for vSphere edition only, and NSX T means it's not only for vSphere, it's supported for any platform. Like NSX T, you can run on on-premises, private cloud, public cloud and hybrid cloud. That's the reason and T means transformers, V means vSphere. So NSXV experience is not required to learn the NSXT. Okay, now let's start with the basic points. Uh, let me explain you the data center. Let's say data center, we can also call it as HTDC, hardware defined data center. In our data center, in order to place all of our servers, storage and network, we have we require a one rack. And within the rack, we can place our servers or suppose in this diagram, I, we have a two HPE synergy frames. It is a better blade servers. So we have two synergy frames. Here is one frame and above is the another frame. It have a multiple server. Each blade acts as a one physical server. So on top of the HP synergy frame, we have a storage. That storage is HPE nimble storage. So within a rack, you can place your server and storage. And some cases, even if you want to keep the switches also in the same rack, we, we can have an option to place the switches in the same rack. Let's say our organization infrastructure is tiny organization. Even within one or two racks, we can able to manage all of our compute devices, network devices, and storage devices. So within the two to three racks, our tiny infrastructure is supported. Suppose our organization size is, it grows from tiny infrastructure to small organize small infrastructure size our racks existing two racks is not sufficient we have to add additional racks and servers we have to add switches and network and similarly our infrastructure size is let's say medium size even four or five racks are not enough we have to increase our rack suppose our organization infrastructure is keep growing now our organization structure size is it's moved from medium to large large means not only one or uh, 10 racks, we require uh, so many racks. So suppose in this sample diagram, it's in this picture, it is showing as this is actual data center, how it looks like. Here, there are so many racks. In the, if you see in the left side and the right side, there are multiple racks. And even your organization sizes keep growing, our data center also, we have to keep increasing our all the hardware equipments, compute, network, and storage, okay? And the main, Components, if you have multiple servers, the technology we use is compute. If we have multiple uh, sandboxes, we consider the technology is storage. All the storage equipments comes under the storage. And if you have multiple network devices like switches, router, firewall and all, it comes under the network. So within a data center, not only these three major components, compute, network and storage, we also have multiple other net hardware components like UPS devices, power equipments, and also firewall devices, routers, and number of devices are available in the our physical data center. We can also call it as hardware defined data center. So a data center is a physical location, most commonly a building that houses core IT and computing services and infrastructure. And put even more simply, a data center is a physical place to store and compute data. Compute means all of our servers data. And this has not only been financially expensive, but also come at the cost of flexibility and agility in the rapidly changing business landscape. So it's always keep changing, depends on our business requirements. Okay, this is about the basic overview of a data center. Now, let's talk about the networking devices. What is the most common used networking device? Sir? These are all the four network devices. One is switch. In the right side, if you see the diagram, this is the switch. And the second one refers as a router. And third one refers as a firewall. And last one is load balancer. Let's say in the switch, we have multiple third party vendors like Cisco switches, Aruba switches, and so many vendors are available to uh, providing the network devices. But the actual purpose of switch is, it is a hardware device that centralizes communication between wired devices connected to, connected within a LAN, local area network. So if you want to communicate from one system to another system or one server to another server, again, from server to any of the 
non identical systems also for communication in order to establish the communication we require a switch and if we want to communicate between two different networks we require a router but the purpose of router is it is a device that enables the communication between two or more different logical networks and firewall so firewall also the main purpose of firewall is it is a device that protects the network from unauthorized access if any unauthorized person trying to access your organization network it's always denied so we have to open the firewall ports if it is a legitimate access we have to allow if it is unauthorized access we have to deny so it allays and denies the network traffic based upon the policy configured okay and the policy can be configured like a, for our all organization employees we configured it as a yellow yellow condition and the non non authentication like unauthorized or out of our office if the users are not existing in our office we can set the policy rule as a deny okay deny means it won't allow you to access our network and another network device is load balancer load balancer is it is the ability to balance traffic across two or more wan links without using complex routing protocol like bgp product gateway protocol and generally load balancer is like a suppose we have any application that application server is a critical application for critical server application instead of maintaining one application it's recommended to maintain a two application servers like app 1 and app 2 to balance the load between application 1 and application 2 we need to configure a load balancer so when we have a load balancer ip address when the user is trying to access that i at that application instead of directly connecting to the application 1 and application 2 they will connect through the load balancer ip address this load balancer purpose is it will balance the load among these two application servers even not only limited to two application you can increase the application count as well the purpose of load balancer is the name itself says load balancer the whatever the traffic is coming to the load balancer that traffic will be distributed to the all your specific virtual machines or servers so this is about the basic overview of networking devices and let's talk about other basic points see one of other basic point is osi model the osi model also very important osi stands for open systems interconnection it has been developed by iso iso full form is international organization for standardization in the year 1984 and it is a seven layer architecture this layer concept is important and with each layer having specific functionality to perform all these seven layers work collaboratively collaboratively means together to transmit the data from one person to another across the globe so if you want to send any of the data from one network to across the globe we can send using the osa model osa model means it's a seven layer architecture so let's quickly understand the what is a seven layers see here is the seven layer architecture so we have if you see from the left side one layer 1 layer 2 layer 3 layer 4 5 6 and 7 this is the osa model layer 7 architecture host a means it's a source system and host b is a destination so destination can be within a organization or it can be out of the organization or within a globe anywhere in the somewhere in the host b so it's like a source destination if you want to send any of the information from source to destination layer 7 represent as a application and layer 6 is presentation layer 5 is session layer and 4 is nothing but a transport layer network layer data link layer and physical layer in general the layer 7 layer 5 6 7 is represents as a data and layer four transport is the segments and uh, layer 3 is represent as a packets and layer 2 is frames and layer 1 is bits okay this is the layers information how many layers we have means seven layers normally the network network services will start working from layer 2 to layer 7 because layer 1 is a physical layer only it's like a source system and destination system so, but the network is coming to picture from layer 2 to layer 7 and if you want to remember this layers information just for our easy memory how to remember the osa model seven layers 
from application to physical layer that means layer 7 to layer 1 if you want to remember the all the layer names uh, for an easy shortcut is all people seems to need data processing if you remember this sentence the first letter represent as a a p s that means application layer presentation layer session layer transport layer network layer data link layer and physical layer and similarly, if you want to remember from layer one to layer seven, reverse order, from layer one to layer seven, you can just remember this sentence. People don't need to sell pickles anymore. So people don't need to set, uh, sell pickles anymore means first letter P is physical layer, data link layer, N means network layer, T means transport, S means session layer, P means presentation, and A means application. So this is a easy, uh, recognition even uh, some of the uh, scenarios if you want to immediately recall this shortcut will be useful now let's talk about what is the main functionality of osi model let's say in the osi model we have a host layers layer 1 to layer 7 and let's try to understand the process and protocol for example within the first one the host layers we know application presentation session and transport layer 7 6 5 and 4 and here the host layers is nothing but here it's like a network process to the end user application and during this scenario it requires some of the process related protocols that protocol can be it it is like a the protocol smtp dns http ftp and so on and the end user layer suppose the end user is trying to send an email address if you want to send an email like suppose if he is using a gmail he has to open a https gmail.com from that website you need to open a gmail website and you need to enter the some email address so that is nothing but a application layer and then he has to present some information like a presentation means data representation and encryption here if you want to send the any of the file like a jpg file or any of the html or document if you want to send just just attach in that email that is called it as presentation layer and the session layer if you want to send inter inter host communication you want to send it within your organization team or if you want to send it to a different team like within your gmail if you want to send or you are sending from gmail to yahoo mail or sending from gmail to any of the outlook email any some external one if you want to send that session information we have to type when we need to send we need to send it now or we need to send it by tomorrow that session information we have to present in the layer 5 session layer and sync and send it to the ports and the fourth one is like a transport layer this transport layer is like a end to end connection and reliability here we have to use other protocols tcp udp spx generally tcp for a wire communications or lan communications and udp is used for a wireless communications and let's talk about the other layers as well so other layers are network within the network layer and we also have a this process is uh, this network layer process path determination and logical addressing and here the protocols are internet ip addressing and icmp and px and same way data link layer even data link layer is like a physical addressing and here also we have protocol 3 ppp protocol slip protocol and here is present as a frames and the last layer layer one is physical layer and here is media signal and binary transformation and here the example network device represent as a hub or switch and this is a physical structure so within these seven layers we just now talk about the what is the host layers we have and what is the process and what is the protocol this is a high level overview only i'm not going in the deep day manner but for our easy understanding how what is the, all this functionality is let's say for example i am planning to send one courier or one letter from singapore to india if i am trying to send one letter means we need to take the letter application the doc that letter file we have to take and we need to type that is nothing but a application when we take the letter or courier we need to write something on that that means we have to send either a package or if you want to write one uh, one document and write it something that is nothing but a presentation and then 
and the fifth layer represent as a session session means if you are trying to send your letter or courier from singapore to india that means we have to plan before that when we want to send suppose if you want to send it by next week means we need to plan in advance the session one week in, one week before so that is nothing but a session layer let's say we already decided our time and we written uh, our letter and finally we need to send it to the transport so transport means we are, if it is a letter means we need to go into the nearby post office or letter box we have to drop post office box we have to drop if it is a courier means you need to go to the nearby courier office that is the actual transport layer so in our courier service or post office what they will do is they will collect that letter and they will verify whether this letter is belongs to the which location let's say this letter is belongs not to the singapore we are sending to the india so the network is it will send it to the specific network it will move the letter from singapore to india once the letter reach the india within that letter we also written our destination address as well as our pin number personal identification number like pin code we have to write that pin code with that data information it uh, that is nothing but a data link layer our address and the pin code numbers and with that data information our post office postman will send that letter to destination that means physically he is handing that letter to the india address so how we are sending a letter from source to destination similarly our network packet also if you are sending any network information from one system to another system like if you are sending an email from gmail to any other third party email or if you are sending email from one gmail email to another gmail also this back end network how it will transform the packets is this is the main process if you have basic idea on this process this process will be used in our network virtualization or it within our nsx concept okay hope you understand the high level overview now let's try to understand what is software defined networking software defined networking in short form we call it as sdn so this is also one of the important definition before we learn n60 so in our software defined uh, network suppose let's observe the right side diagram first if you see the physical network we have four switches switch 1 switch 2 switch 3 and switch 4 all switch are connected interconnected but in the switch default functionality is it's combined with data plan and control plane within a physical network even second switch also it have combined data plane and control plane but when comes to the software defined network the only difference is the it's the software defined means it's separated the both data plane and control plane let's say all the switch consist of data plane but the control plane separated from the switch it's become as controller and control plane but when you see the physical network both are combined state but in the software defined network both are separated that is the key point here now let's understand the description network virtualization and software defined network both seek to provide greater network agility agility means speed or swiftness and both use software to recreate recreate or we call it as virtualization network components and both separate the control plane from the data plane let's say in physical network we have a data plane control plane but what the software defined network do is it's separate the control plane from the data plane that is the importance of software defined network and both use controller to help centralized management it uses a one controller for centralized managing of all your software defined switches and both prov provide both means here network virtualization and software defined both are same terminology both provide increased agility to allow great speed and precision in administration and sdn software defined networking uses software to control switches and routers so in order to separate the data plane and control plane this software defined network require a software that software only we are going to talk about that software name is vmware nsx and the network is not fully virtualized hardware is still plays a role in sdn in software defined network still we require a physical switches because if you want to communicate from one server to another server still we need a physical switch but how we can effectively use this software defined network is we'll discuss in the following slides 
now let's move on to the another point that is what is a software defined data center in short form stdc earlier we talk about hardware defined data center in our hardware defined data center every equipment is hardware only we have physical server physical networking devices and physical storage but in the software defined data center only difference is we have all of the software components only like in stdc refers data center whose entire infra server network and storage is virtualized and deliver as a service in stdc environment a software layer is added to hardware configuration to orchestrate the management of computing storage and networking services so for our easy understanding in our physical data center our main three components are compute network and storage compute means multiple servers network means all our networking devices switch router firewall and load balancer and storage means our storage boxes sandbox or nas box or iscsi box but this data center if you want to make it as a service software defined data center stdc only difference is we have to make all our infrastructure components to virtualize so for compute become as compute virtualization or we call it as server virtualization and network become as network virtualization storage become as a storage virtualization if we have server virtualization network virtualization storage virtualization the combination of these three components we consider as a software defined data center now let's talk about the another point in stdc so within this stdc compute virtualization network virtualization and storage virtualization so what is the main software we are using to make this compute virtualization or server virtualization and what is the software we can use to make the network virtualization that softwares are in compute virtualization we are using the software or we call it as hypervisor that hypervisor name is esxi this esxi product name consider as a vmware vSphere. and similarly our network virtualization if you require a software that software name is nsx within the nsx we have two versions nsx v that means nsx for vSphere and nsx t nsx transformers two versions this software is used for a network virtualization and the storage virtualization we also have a software called vsan virtual sun but virtual sun is not a software it is one of the vmware vcenter cluster feature when we enable the cluster feature vsan our existing local hard disk we can make use of a virtual sun and similarly virtual volumes for virtual volumes if you want to configure it require a additional storage box and also we virtual volume is also one of the vSphere storage protocol using that vSphere storage protocol we can configure a virtual volumes but vSAN and virtual volumes if you want to uh, learn in detail i i already given the previous session videos you can find it from our youtube channel playlist you can look for your vsan and virtual volumes but in our session in this session i'm going to focus only on a nsx and in a and software defined data center all infrastructure is virtualized and the control of data center is automated by software that software is esxi nsx and vsan and vSphere is the foundation of stdc yes uh, virtualization is really started with a vSphere only so we consider vSphere is the foundation of software defined data center now i am going to focus on server virtualization network virtualization now once we understand the operation model between server virtualization network virtualization it is easy to understand the actual nsx definition so now what is the server and network virtualization operation model so with server and network operation model normally our compute our servers are running with a x86 architecture x86 means any 86 architecture we have a processors 8085 8086 186 286 like that our processor versions are keep increasing but the last digit is 86 only so x means any 86 architecture so within the any x86 architecture you can install your one server and the, let's say for our easy understanding i took one hpe server within a server the main hardware components are cpu memory disk nic but apart from this four we also have so many other network other hardware component but these four are the 
key components so cpu memory disk and nic this is the compute x86 architecture similarly even in a network also we have a network devices and ip transport network but uh, same like our server even in the network device also we should learn the network devices our main network devices are switch router load balancer the switch is this is a switch router load balancer and firewall so this is the physical layer now let's talk about the virtualization concept now virtualization how we can make use of the server to virtualization means we have to install a virtualization software that software name is esxi but technically esxi means it's a type 1 hypervisor so we call it as server hypervisor or you can directly say the product name esxi but here i am ta talking about vmware esxi but in the real time scenario your server hypervisor means not only vmware esxi other third party vendors also providing a virtualization software like microsoft hyper v that is also hypervisor and nutanix ahv nutanix acropolis hypervisor and similarly oracle also providing a kvm kernel virtual machine software that is also we can use for a virtualization software in specifically for server virtualization and now within our virtualization software when we install the esxi the benefit of esxi is it is a tech it is a virtualization software virtualization means it is a technology it allows you to transform hardware into software that means all your hardware components it become as a software component as we know within a server virtualization we can create a multiple vm once we create the virtual machine you can install the guest operating system and application not only vm you can also install the virtual appliances and within a virtual machine we have a main key components virtual machine definition is it is a software generated machine looks like a physical machine but virtual machine consists of virtual cpu virtual memory virtual disk virtual nic that means virtualization is nothing but a, it is a technology it allows you to transform hardware into software that means cpu become as a vcpu memory become as v memory disk become as v disk and nic become as v nic not only this four hardware components even other hardware components like cpu we have a virtual virtual cpu virtual disk virtual nic same way we also have usb scsi controllers cd rom virtual cd rom and so on these are all the virtual components and similarly what it happen is virtualization key role is it's a decoupled decoupled means disassociated your hardware and it make it as a software components same concept in a network also but for network also we require a network hypervisor so here our virtualization software name is network hypervisor and exact product name is nsx so nsx means n means network virtualization s means security x means any any platform so nsx is simply we can call it as network virtualization and security platform using nsx also what it will do it will decouple your hardware components and it will make it as a software components so those software components become as a see here in physically we have a physical switch but in the nsx we call it as a logical switch this is the icon for switch and the physical router when comes to the nsx we call it as a logical router same like how we see cpu we call it as vcpu and similarly router we call it as a logical router and load balancer this is the icon for the load balancer the load will be balanced from lb to balance to the among all your application workloads application vms so this is the icon for load balancer but we call it as a logical load balancer and same way firewall but in the nsx terminology we call it as a logical firewall the same network virtualization if you distribute it to among the multiple esx hosts and multiple vcenter servers the terminology will be slightly vary we call it as distributed switch distributed router distributed firewall and distributed load balancer so either we can use logical name or we can use the naming convention as distributed so try to understand the naming conventional terminology now and later i will explain you in detail each concept okay so here 
I hope you understand the main difference between server virtualization and network virtualization. Why I took the example of server virtualization is we already familiar with the server virtualization. Using ESXi, we are creating VM and VM have a virtual components, vCPU, vMemory, vDisk, vNSC. Same way, when you configure a network hypervisor, that is NSX software, when you install NSX software, this software will help us to make decoupled your network devices and make it as a logical components. That is logical switch, logical router, logical load balancer and logical firewall. So that is the reason this area we consider as a virtual network in network virtualization. Within your virtual network, what services it will provide is layer two. Just now we discussed the layer two. That means data link layer, layer three. Layer 3 means network layer, layer 4, transport layer 2 until the layer 7 network service are provided using the NSX. Okay, that is the high level overview. What is the difference between server oper virtualization operation model and network virtualization operation model? If we clear about this point, then we'll go to the some more deep data to the another point, which is network hypervisor. Let's focus on network hypervisor point now. See, network hypervisor means, as we discuss now, if you read the description, physical network resources are recreated or virtualized in software. So physical network device means switching, routing, firewall, load balance. Not only this four, we also have some additional devices like VPN, connectivity to physical. That means it's a edge service gateway. And these all consider as a services. And these all, we can also call it as virtual network. To communicate between all your virtual machine, we require a virtual network. And even if you are using virtual network, still we need a existing physical network, okay? And to control all your device, we require a NSX controller. This is the icon for NSX controllers. And now let's try to understand the second point. Switches, routers, firewall, and load balancer, other network devices become virtual devices in network hypervisor layer. Okay, same point. The pool of devices can be used as needed or on demand. That means these devices, it will create, but we can utilize whenever necessary. Same like in our virtual machine, let's say when we create a virtual machine, we assign the disk as 100 GB. But in future, if you need an additional hard disk, we can add an additional hard disk, additional disk with 100 GB. Same way, even here, switch routing firewall coming to picture whenever is necessary. Let's say I created one new virtual machine. That virtual machine is Windows VM. But user, uh, when we create the VM, we given the access to the user. But user say, still I am unable to access my virtual machine in the network. That means our NSX may chance to block the virtual machine. So by default, all the connections in the NSX is any, any disabled. So we have to allow, that means the micro segmentation feature is available in NSX. We have to allow the virtual machines within our network. To allow the virtual machine access for Windows machines, what we have to do is, we have to allow the RDP port 3389 for the specific virtual machine. That the virtual, either you can enter the virtual machine name or IP address, and you can enter the port number so that that 3389, once we allow in our logical firewall level or DFW, distributed firewall level, then you can inform to the user to re-verify. When, when we allow the port 3389, user can able to RDP. Same scenario for Linux servers and Solaris servers. Let's say our Solaris machine or Linux machine newly provisioned in our vCenter, and vCenter using ASX or existing template, we deployed a new Linux VM and new Solaris VM. These two VMs also, before assigning to the end user, the recommendation is if you are using a NSX infrastructure, we have to allow the SSH port, secure shell, 22 to port in a DFW. When you enable the SSH port 22 port, then you can inform the user to verify the remote access, whether the users Linux VM, SSH VM, they are able to access from the SSH via PuTTY. So that's how we can utilize. And the entire network can now be run on software. See, all the network will be run on a software only. Now let's talk about what are the benefits of network virtualization. So benefits of network virtualization, network virtualization help organization achieve major advances in speed, agility, and security by the automating and simplifying many of the process that go into the running a data center network and managing network 
and security in the cloud. Not only limited NSX in a on-premises, we can run the network virtualization in a private cloud, public cloud, and hybrid cloud. Excuse me. And here are the some of the key benefits of network virtualization. Reduce the network provisioning time from weeks to minutes. Same like our vCenter server. vCenter server also before virtualization, if you want to deploy a hundred servers, we have to wait few months time to get the physical 100 servers. But when it comes to the vCenter server, if you have an existing template, Windows, Linux, Solaris template, if your requirement to provision 100 servers, we can provision within hours. That means the months become as hours. Same way, those provisioned virtual machine, if you want to provide your firewall ports, if you want to allow or deny firewall ports, if you want to provide the access, accessibility from one virtual machine to another virtual machine, and also if you need any of the routing protocol needs to be open, or if you need any application server require a load balancing services, this and all, if you want to do it in a physical environment, it may take longer time. But when we are using a software defined network, using NSX, within NSX, the purpose of NSX is reduce the network provisioning. Network provisioning means all these network services, logical switching, routing, load balancing, and firewall. Using all these services, our provisioning task, instead of when you compare with the physical networking, in software-defined networking, our provisioning time will reduce to minutes and achieve greater operational efficiency by automating manual process. When we are using a physical hardware or physical network automation is not easy but when we whenever this this physical data center become a software defined data center the software can be easily automated so that is the point we mentioned here and place and move workloads independently of the physical topology there will be no stickiness to the physical network if it is a software components means we can easily migrate from one location to another location and improve network security within the data center okay these are all the benefits of network virtualization now it's the time to understand software defined data center architectural overview so here is the stdc architecture overview suppose if i explain this one in the first we may get confused so that's the reason i given a explanation between server virtualization and network virtualization operation model first and we understand how it is decoupled from physical to virtual now you can try to understand the stdc architecture overview let's say the left side point first point refers as a vmware stdc is fully integrated stack of hardware and software and consists of four components see the four components are vSphere, vsan nsx and vrelage within the sddc architecture the four components are compute means vSphere, and vsan means storage and nsx means networking and vrelage means all the vrelage automation management tools okay this is the four components and in in the SDDC, Software Defined Data Center, the hypervisor is the controller. If you see why they mention hypervisor is the controller is within our server virtualization, when we install the ESXi, ESXi means it's a type one hypervisor. Using that hypervisor only, that is only the controller to create a multiple virtual machine. Once we create the VM, we can install OS and applications. And similarly, in our networking layer also, when we install the NSX, it will provide you a network service from layer two, layer three, layer 4 and layer 7 that is the reason we talk about the osi layer earlier so osi layer we we already know layer 1 to layer 7 so layer 2 means data link layer layer 3 network layer layer 4 transport layer until layer 7 all these layers communication establishment will be happen only on a nsx layer that means software defined network layer this network we consider as a virtual network but in the servers we consider as a virtual machine here is virtual network on top of the virtual network we can provide all the virtual machine network access based on your configurations you can configure logical routing you can configure firewall you can configure the load balancing and in general communication we require a logical switch okay and comes to the storage environment even here hypervisor for virtual sand and v volumes we require the hypervisor is esx hypervisor only using the esx hypervisor we can configure storage data and control plane and we can configure virtual data store within a virtual data store we can store the vmdk files so in the below is the physical layer see x86 architecture 
and the network gear that means network switches all the network components and x86 server plus storage is nothing but a vsan okay so hope you understand these three layers when we have compute networking and storage layers if you want to do automate this one or manage effectively efficiently and optimized way we require a v relate suit that we relate suit consists of mainly three products we relate business business means we in short form we are b we relate business this business purpose is mainly for costing usage metering and benchmarking and we are a we realize automation that we are a tool we can use for automation purpose service catalogs and governance and other component is operations that means we realize operations manager that is also vmware manage one of the management tool using we realize operation management tool it help you to do performance dashboards alerting and also capacity management configuration and compliance these all features will we can get it using this tool okay so within our stdc architecture today we are mainly focusing on the network software defined network nsxt okay and why we are saying stdc is in our later concepts we keep using the word stdc and vsan and esx7 when we are using these words we should be familiar this terminology okay and this stdc supports private see in the top we it clearly says in our in the architecture stdc supports for private cloud hybrid cloud and public cloud all it will support okay now let's talk about stdc implementation options when we plan to implement the software defined data center this software defined data center can implement in a multiple methods this multiple choices we have first option is build your own let's say instead of using a all vmware software defined data center components you can also use other third party components that's the reason they mention as build your own for example i am using server virtualization component is esxi and for the network virtualization i am not using nsx but i am planning to use storage virtualization instead of vsan i am going for a nutanix storage that is nutanix also providing one of the storage virtualization product that is prism central and also aos acropolis operating system when we plan to use other third party storage virtualization also we can use that means that is nothing but a bring your own storage virtualization network virtualization tools so that concept is explained here so select and procure software and hardware components separately integrate on your own so we can integrate on our own suppose if you are directly accessing the vmware pre sales team or sales team they will provide you one full stack of stdc component that stdc components includes our vspa nsx vsan and also we have we realize suit okay that is the best way within one full stack we can configure the stds but uh, vmware also providing a flexibility no need to stick to the complete vmware products even if you want to go for other third party also it's uh, it's always welcome we can do it our own stdc infrastructure as well and another option is implementation option con converged infrastructure converged means traditional data center components like shared storage hardware servers switches integrated and solid in a single chassis like cisco flex pod and cisco ucs these all consider as a converged infrastructure while buying the infrastructure itself it's combined with a converged server network storage infrastructure those infrastructure also we can use it and perspective of software stack is pre installed sometime it's already coming with a pre installed one okay and another method of software defined data center is hyper converged infrastructure hyper converged means when you install a hypervisor like esxi it become as a hyper converged infrastructure so that means integration of hardware compute storage and networking with the software that means our compute means esxi storage vsan networking nsx with software and provides a single point of entry for stdc life cycle management so single point of entry means if you want to do updates and upgrade using stdc uh, lcm life cycle manager we can perform the all update and upgrades and easy scale out by adding more units scale out means if you want to in future if you want to increase your capacity in a server perspective network and storage perspective uh, within stdc if you are using a same stack it's easy to do and add the more units okay that is a implementation 
options. Now let's talk about the benefits of STDC. If you are using a software defined data center, there will be a plenty of benefits. See the uh, business priorities, the orange color is refers as a STDC outcome and green color refers as a mobility outcome. Let's start from left. See the innovation experience and security. Within the STDC, the main key benefit is capex reduction. That means capital expenditure reduction, annual maintenance cost also reduced and data center virtualization and hybrid cloud extensibility and streamlined and automated data center operations and as well as application and infrastructure delivery automation. Automation means we can use we realize automation tool, IT service delivery time in minutes. Previously, without NSX and without SDDC components, it may take months and years, but now it's minutes and hours. And business mobility, secure delivery of mobile applications in minutes and the security control na native to infrastructure and improve the security to effort ratio and high availability and resilient infrastructure, high availability also. We can maintain the like a stretched cluster, even the network layer also we can maintain and storage layer we can maintain and server layer also we can maintain when we using a STDC infrastructure and improved uptime compared to without STDC our uptime is already improved. It will help you to meet our SLS. Now it's the time to talk about what is VMware NSX. So as I mentioned, N means network virtualization. Yes means security. X means any platform. So NSX is nothing but a network virtualization and security platform. So VMware NSX is a network virtualization and security platform. Now we talk about the network virtualization concept. We talk about the how the security is available. Now it's ready to understand the complete definition. VMware NSX is a network virtualized security platform that enables the virtual cloud network. Not only a on premises, it's a enable a virtual cloud network. A software defined, see the terminology software defined approach to networking that extends the across data centers, clouds and application frameworks. Let's try to understand the architecture NSX diagram. Within this diagram, as I mentioned, NS means networking security. Yes means security. This network and security is providing a complete platform. It's providing at the end of the day when we create a VM network or storage are mainly for a production application. This application you can run on VM. You can run as a container application. You can run on bare metal directly on hardware, directly on data center, any of the equipment. And you can run the applications on VMware Cloud, Outpost, and Public Cloud. Outpost is nothing but a AWS Outpost, which is a private cloud only. So when we run your applications anywhere, but uh, we can using the NSX, it will help you to run the same point we highlighted here. You can extend your network data centers data centers means physical data on premises and also clouds that means public and private and application frameworks these are all application frameworks we can anywhere you can run with tailored design depends on your business requirements and also not only this one even within a single click automation automation also available that is a nsx high level overview now VMware, what is the VMware networking and security vision? See, VMware network and security vision is consistent networking and security across the business fabric. So this business fabric is like a NSX, as I mentioned in our previous slide, we can run the NSX on branch offices, private data centers, and also public clouds anywhere we can run and our applications also application platforms can run on vms containers and microservices this is icon for microservices container means this is icon and vm okay so nsx can run everywhere and also users can also access our nsx application through nsx users can access our application platforms and not only the laptop tab and mobile you can also access through iot internet of things okay this is the actual vmware networking and security vision the main point here is consistent networking and security across business fabric fabric means all the associated devices network devices like public cloud to communicate between branch offices private data centers and all okay now 
let's try to understand what is the VMware NSX portfolio. Portfolio means NSX collection of products. So VMware NSX portfolio, the foundation of the virtual cloud network. And if you see the below green color one, network and security virtualization, the above one is talking about network and security management and automation. Let's try to understand the virtualization concept first, and then we'll go to the automation portfolio. Within the virtualization portfolio, if you want to use NSX, there is a multiple NSX flavors are available. If you are talking about NSXT data center, today we start with a NSXT data center. Data center means, N means networking and security for data center workloads. Workload means your VM running with application. That is nothing but a workload. And NSX cloud, the name itself says cloud. That means this product is mainly for public cloud workloads. If you are using NSX intelligence, the name itself have intelligence. This software is mainly used for security visibility, policy management, analytics, and compliance. And NSX distributed IDS IPS, that means intrusion detection system, intrusion prevention system. This is mainly for context-based distributed IDS for threat protection and compliance. So these are all the multiple NSX products. Depends on our customer need, we can use the specific product. But today we are mainly focusing the concept is NSX data center and the other one is NSX advanced load balancer uh, this is also mainly for multi cloud load balancing purpose and NSX service mesh this is also mainly for cloud native workloads and NSX hybrid connect the name itself says hybrid connect it will help you to communicate between data center and cloud workload migration okay and the High level, these products are providing your security, integration, extensibility, automation, and elasticity. All these features are available. And now, coming to the management and automation. Within the NSX, if you want to do automation, like cloud-based management, workflow automation, blueprints, templates, and all, if you want to do this task, we require separately two products. One is Network Insight. This Network Insight is separate software. We have to download from VMware and it require an additional license. This Network Insight mainly for network discovery and insights. Like uh, suppose if I want to communicate between Virtual Machine 1 to Virtual Machine 2, that communication through NSX, the communication is establishing successfully. VM1 able to communicate to VM2. For example, in future, all of the sudden, VM1 to VM2 communication is dropped. That means VM1 is unable to communicate to the VM2. During the troubleshooting scenario, let's say VM1 is in a, our on-premises data center and VM2 is in a remote data center. During this scenario, within your on-premises NSX, if you want to do troubleshoot or analysis, within one site you can do. But if you have a multiple sites, if you want to analyze, discover the where the actual problem is, exists during that scenario we can use network insight it will help you to network discovery and insights that is importance of network insight tool mainly for troubleshooting purpose and if there is any uh, traffic issues and all we can analyze using we realize network insight in short form v r n i okay it's a separate tool and we realize automation. We realize automation. I already given overview of VRE in our YouTube channel. So if you want to refer, go to playlist and review the VRE in detail. But the importance of VRE is we can do end-to-end -end workload automation. All your NSX regular operations, day two operations can be automated using we realize automation. But uh, for this NSX we are focusing only on the NSXT data center. This NSXT 3.2, it covers this layer. We have capability of cloud integration and all, but mainly we are covering the networking and security for data center workload. Data center means it's on-premises only. Okay. Now, let's talk about why do we use VMware NSX? So, what is the benefit to my organization to use NSX? Here is the example. Let's say, let's talk about the first diagram and then we'll, I will explain you the second diagram. Within the first diagram, if you see here, east-west layer three, same host. East-west layer three means, as we know, what is the layer three? Layer three means network. Earlier, we already talked about the layer three. So within the east-west network three, layer three means network, 
within a same host, same ESX host, how it will communicate. Let's say before NSX and with NSX. Let's understand the before NSX. Before NSX, if you want to communicate from VM1, web tier to app tier VM, from web tier VM, if you want to communicate, VM is already running on ESX host, it's connected to virtual switch. From virtual switch link, it will connect it to the fabric A. Fabric A means any of the network device, let's say network switch. So this is one hop from network switch to core switch from core switch to it will communicate again connection back to the same switch again connection back to the ESX and app tier VM. So roughly it have a one hop two three four hops. So that is why they mention as four wire hops to communicate one virtual machine within our ESX host to communicate between web VM to app VM four hops. Same way if I want to communicate from web VM to app VM with NSX. With NSX means earlier there is no NSX, but here we have a NSX. Network hypervisor layer, our NSX software is already installed. If you have NSX, we have a benefit of software defined components, logical switch, logical router, logical firewall, logical load balancer. But in this communication scenario, we need only logical switch. So this scenario, even if you want to configure a different network also, let's say here network is 10.1.1, here the network network is 10.1.2. Both are two different networks. But in the physical layer, it's connected from switch to router and router to switch and switch to our destination VM. But same way, in our NSX also, what it will do is, see in the above, they mention as with NSX, distributed logical routing. The name is logical routing. So in our uh, here diagram also it's showing us along with virtual switch, we have a NSX DLR, distributed logical router. This distributed logical router will have help you to communicate from web tier VM to app tier VM, but there is no wire hops, zero wire hops. I just explained this diagram with to virtual machine communication. Suppose, let's imagine in our organization, we have a more than 3000 virtual machines. Daily, there will be a so many communications. Virtual machine, web VM communicate to app VM. App VM will also communicate to database VM. There will be vice versa. In order to communicate more than 3000 VMs or more than less number also, let's say 500 VMs or 100 VM also, if we are establishing a communication without NSX, there will be a network performance issues. To reduce your network wire hops, the best method and to enhance your network performance, the best method is we can start utilizing the network hypervisor, which is NSX. So here, see communication, never leaves the host with NSX. This is the first scenario. Let's talk about the second scenario. What is the second scenario? East-West layer, layer three. East-West layer means within the organization, within the network. Suppose North-South means it's going from intranet to internet network. Okay, I'm talking about intranet communication. Like here also before NSX, that means no NSX here. Here also we have a web tier VM and app tier VM. But here the scenario is host to host. Our VMs are not running on same ESX. It's running on two different ESX hosts. So during that scenario, how many ops? Again, same, same like previous. First, it will communicate VM to the switch and switch to router and again router to return to the switch and switch to destination VM. So totally wires, one, two, three, four wires. So four wire hops. But when it comes to with NSX scenario, it's again going for a one extra layer is increased. When we, earlier, we have only same ESX host, but now it is a host to host, one ESX to different ESX. During that scenario also, it's not, it's going like a two wire hubs. It's going to the physical uh, switch and again switch to immediately it's connected to the our DSX distributed logical router. That point we highlighted here, distributed logical routing. Using distributed logical routing, it's communicated to the destination, two wire hops. Even compare with a previous before NSX, four wire hops, but in the with NSX, two wire hops. That means our network is red reduced latency and network hops with NSX. Okay, this is the main benefits of why do we use NSX? And the highlighted point here is performance gains, eliminating hair pinning with VMware NSX. Okay, this is the important point. Apart from this, there are some additional benefits also. What is the 
why do we use vmware nsx vmware nsx delivers a complete layer 2 to layer 7 networking and security virtualization platform and allowing us to manage entire network as a single entity platform single pane of glass this layer 2 to layer 7 first point let me show you in the following slide what is layer 2 and layer 7 see a complete layer 2 and layer 7 platform means which includes all the network services let's see nsx data center and cloud platform when they mention network nsx data center and cloud platform don't uh, confuse in our nsx portfolio we have two products nsx data center and cloud the both are providing a same layer 2 to layer 7 platform services which is switching routing internal firewall and also load balancer service mesh and there is another product called vmware sd wan platform sd wan also sd wan also like a software defined wireless uh, wide area network this is also providing cloud connectivity routing and additional options are security and access okay this is the advanced analytics simple integrated and enterprise grade this point only i highlighted here NSX delivers a complete L2 to L7 network and security virtualization platform and allowing a single entity of single plane of glass. This single plane of glass again showing you in the following slide. See here I am showing a NSX as a single networking and security platform. So network means mainly focusing on the connectivity portion, communication between source and destination and security means obviously it's providing a security okay a multi-layer multi-factor authentication and extra enhanced security features are available in here nsx and we can also visible using the network virtualization we can uh, monitor and also verify the traffic from source to destinations and we can perform the day to operations but a single plane of network and security platform means this nsx can run on your on-premises branch existing data center and you can also run on your private cloud any of the third party private cloud and one an example is aws outposts this is the private cloud software and similarly you can run on a public clouds like public clouds means aws cloud google cloud platform gcp and azure cloud and ibm cloud here also you can run the nsx not only private public you can also run on a hybrid cloud which is vmware cloud on aws that is the hybrid cloud this point only i mentioned in the main definition it's a single plan of class and enforce consistent networking and security policies so consistent means continuously providing the network and security policies automate tailor the network to our needs and nsxt data center offers consistent net security services across multiple endpoints multiple endpoints means it can be a esxi kvm kernel based virtual machine bare metal workloads bare metal workload means nsx you can run directly on your hardware also and these workloads can run on a on-premises data center on public and running native workloads or there can be powered by vmware cloud destinations such as vmware cloud on aws and there are multiple options like ibm ovh public cloud and vmware cloud partner program vcpp anywhere we can run so this many benefits we have with nsx that is the reason uh, it's a recommended our customer started using the vmware nsxt clear now this point we covered and nsx is a single plane of platform this point also we covered and now nsx data center uh, as we discussed network and security for all workloads all workload means vms containers this is the icon for container and also bare metal servers see nsx providing the firewall for all here and similarly for providing security to public cloud providing security to our hybrid cloud vmware cloud on aws and across all workload means these are all the workloads okay and now let's talk about what is the vmware multi-cluster and multi-cloud strategy this is the one of the important point vmware's multi-cloud strategy we can try to understand now let's read the first two points here the life cycle management of modern application modern application means nowadays application architectures are completely changed previously we have monolithic and later on tier based architecture now microservice architecture microservice architecture means it's like a completely container platform and microservices even development process also changed previously our applications are running in a development process with waterfall model and later it changed to 
the agile method and now the latest modern applications development process involves devops model development operations model so this modern applications is compromised of five phases five phases sorry these five phases are build run manage connect and protect and within this five phases Tanju, VMware Tanju also separate product for application virtualization, modernization. Tanju plays a big part in the first two, three phases, build, run, manage, and NSX is a critical part of VMware multi-cluster, multi-cloud strategy. Why they are using the word multi-cloud strategies? Just now we verified the NSX definition. NSX can run on private cloud, public cloud, hybrid cloud, bare metal, container, anywhere. That is nothing but a multi-cloud. Suppose your organization is using hybrid cloud with any other cloud. That is nothing but a, your organization is with a multi-cloud platform. So that is the reason VMware says NSX is a critical part of VMware's multi-cluster, multi-cloud strategy. See, as I mentioned, five phases, build, run, manage, connect, and protect. Tanju is main focusing on a build, run, and manage your modern application. And NSX is focusing on a connect and protect. Connect means, N means network. So network virtualization mainly for connectivity. And S means security. Security is mainly to protect your modern applications. OK, and this NSX can run on a with multi cloud strategy. That means you can run on VMware on premises, VMware cloud platforms like hybrid cloud, VMware private cloud, VCF, and you can also run on public clouds. These are all the public clouds, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, IBM Cloud. OK, so this is the high level overview of VMware NSX T. NSX T means, I repeat, network virtualization and security platform. Okay, so that's it for today. Hope you understand the basic concepts of networking, network virtualization, STDC. And finally, I given an overview of complete big picture of NSXT. But I haven't went through the in detail concept. I will cover the in detail technical concepts in the following sessions. That's it for today. Thank you. Thanks for your support. And please do view, like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Nan Cloud Garage. Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.